the OFO A139 Pro 4K dash camera. This is our full review. I'm Ben from Safe Drive Solutions, your dash cam specialist, and this is going to be our full review after one month of using this dash camera in my vehicle. Let's go. Dash camera options. There are four different ways that you can get the VOFO A139 Pro. Option one is front camera. Option two, front camera and rear camera. Option three, front camera and interior camera, popular for Uber drivers. Option four, front camera, interior camera, and rear camera. Now let's go over the different options within this. So the A139 Pro uses a front Starvis 2 sensor, which is eight megapixel, and it's the newest IMX678 image sensor. Viofo is the first to deploy the newest Sony Starvis 2 tech. The A139 Pro is powerful enough to outbeat most 4K dash cam competitors with immensely upgraded image clarity and accuracy in license capturing. So the latest Starvis 2 IMX678 sensor, it offers a wider dynamic range in a single exposure than the normal Starvis sensor that if you do have a prior dash camera, you would be familiar with. It'll bring much less noise and motion blur during day and night. Okay, so to kind of give you a little bit of a history of Viofo if you're not familiar with Viofo. The A129, which has been around for quite a few years now, uh, uses a Sony Exmor. So it doesn't use a Sony Starvis, so it doesn't work as well in low light conditions. The A229 uses a Sony Starvis sensor on the front uh, camera. And then we go to an A139 Pro, which is now 4K in resolution, and uses the Starvis 2, which is the newest image sensor on the market. And if we also look at the rear cameras, the rear camera offerings on the A139 Pro, they're using a two megapixel IMX291 Sony Starvis sensor for the rear and for the interior cameras. Dash cam resolution. On the front camera of an A139 Pro, it gives you a couple different options. One is to have 4K 2160p, which is true 4K, at 30 frames per second. Or you can downgrade it to 1600p, 30 frames per second. If you want, you can also go to 2K resolution, 1440p at 30 frames per second, or change it to 60 frames per second for a smoother response with a lot more detail. Okay. So for front camera and rear camera, or front camera and interior camera, they both have the same resolution options. So 4K 2160p at 30 frames per second, plus a 1080p 30 frames per second rear camera or interior camera. Or the 4K front camera can also be changed to 1600p uh, 30 frames per second and a rear camera at 1080p, 30 frames per second. You can also downgrade both to a 2K, 1440p, 30 frames per second, or a 2K, 1440p, 60 frames per second. For the three channel configuration, we have a couple different options here. The It'll actually do a front 4K, 2160p, but at 24 frames per second. The interior camera will do a 1080p at 24 frames, frames per second, and the rear camera will do a 1080p at 24 frames per second. Now, when we go to the, uh, you can also downgrade to a 4K 1600p at 30 frames per second, or a 1080p at 30 frames per second, and a rear camera at 30 frames per second. Or you can change it to 2K, 1440p, 30 frames per second, 1080p, 30 frames per second, and 1080p, 30 frames per second. Needless to say, as you can see, there's a lot of options. 
I personally, when I was using it in my own vehicle, I was still using 4K and I still felt that it was still operating really well at the 24 frames per second. Uh, but, you know, the choice is yours. Dash cam layout of the Viofo A139 Pro. So first things first, we have here, this is actually your power on and off button. Next to that, we have the recording button, and this will actually start or stop your recordings. Right here, this is the emergency recording or video protect button. Next to that, you can turn your microphone on or off when it comes to recording. And finally, your Wi-Fi on or off button if you want to actually pair your uh, phone to it so that you can download videos and change settings via the app. When we look on the top of the unit here, what we have here, all the way over here is the audio video out. Next to that is external microphone, if you wanted to purchase an external microphone. Uh, next to that is the rear camera port, the interior camera port, and then you have your power plug-in right here for your cigarette lighter cable or the parking mode cable, depending on which unit you want to go with. On the side here, this is where the micro SD card actually goes into the unit. And as you can see on the front here, this is your lens, which allows you to move it up or down and change the angle to adjust it for best of viewing. Bit rate. You can set the bit rate for video. High bit rate may improve the quality and smoothness of the video, especially when recording fast motion or high contrast scenes. Using high bit rate mode may decrease the amount of recording time available on your memory card. Using a low bit rate will save space and record for longer time. You can change the bit rate from low, normal, high, and maximum on the A139 Pro dash camera. I run it in high or maximum on a frequent basis, and I would recommend the same to anybody who wants to get the best video quality out of this unit. Viewing angle. The A139 Pro has a front viewing angle of 140 degrees, a rear viewing angle of 170 degrees, and an interior viewing angle of, of 170 degrees as well. Depending on the configuration will depend on what viewing angles you have available to you. License plate identification. So when driving with traffic, I do find it to be the best out of any other dash camera that I've tested on the market for picking up license plates during the day or at a night, which you can see in our example video playing right here. However, picking up license plates to oncoming traffic still suffers motion blur on the license plate quite frequently. This is still the hardest obstacle for the dash cam technology available. Hopefully we will see some upgrades to firmware of the unit to dial it in over the next little while. I also have seen when driving through a tunnel when raining that all the different contrast levels, there's just far too many reflections for it to consistently pick up license plates. But you're not going to be driving in a tunnel all day anyways, but needless to say, these are some of the challenges that are still on the market when it comes to license plate identification. However, from what I've seen in terms of performance, this is by far one of the best. High dynamic range. The Viofo A139 Pro has high dynamic range. High dynamic range enables the camera to deliver video with near perfect exposure in varying lighting situations. It can enhance video quality, especially when it comes to the issue of the front license plate being overexposed at night. Uh, take a look at this video right here. It's going to show you the Viofo A129 Pro, which has been out for quite a few years, the Thinkware U1000 and the Viofo A139 Pro in what I love calling the tunnel test. And it will show you just how the A139 Pro does against the other cameras.
G-Sensor. The G-Sensor measures shock forces and locks the video recorded at the time. The settings from low to high determine the amount of force needed. Depending on your settings, you can set the dash cam up to lock the video file recordings. There are different settings even for parking mode and while you're driving. So as you can see here, you can actually change this G-Sensor from low, medium, and high for while driving. And you can also change it from low, medium, and high for while in parking mode. Typically, you set it for a high, higher sensitivity while in parking mode because your vehicle is not in motion. Wi-Fi connectivity. So the A139 Pro has the option of two gigahertz and five gigahertz Wi-Fi. They also have an Android and iOS app. So you can connect to the phone, download videos, and change settings. Now, what I'm gonna show you next is why you want to use five gigahertz, because five gigahertz will be three to four times quicker at downloading videos, and we're gonna show you the exact same video downloaded on my iPhone at two gigahertz, and how quick it is downloaded at five gigahertz. Two SD card capacity. The Viofo dash camera supports up to a 256 gigabyte micro SD card. If you're wondering which SD card to pick up, we do recommend watching our video. We do have a few recommendations or getting a Viofo certified micro SD card. GPS antenna, the Viofo A139 Pro has the GPS antenna built into the dock that the actual camera slides into. This will give you information such as GPS speed and location, which will be embedded into the video. If you do not want to have that information showing up on your video, you can also choose to select that off. I know a lot of people will turn speed off just in case they have a really heavy foot. Parking mode. The A139 Pro has three options for parking mode. Auto event detection. It will automatically record when detecting moving objects or impact while the car is parked. Time lapse. The video was recorded at a low frame rate per second from one, two, three, five, or 10 uh, frames per second. Or there's low bitrate recording. You can lower the resolution to save space while recording during parking mode. Parking mode cable and low battery protection. The Yofo, you must hook up power, ground, and ignition to the vehicle. You must also use the selector switch on the cable to determine your low battery protection. It has set voltages 11.8, 12, 12.2, and 12.4 volts. What this means for you is if it actually drops below those set voltages, the dash camera will shut off in parking mode to protect the battery of the car. Now, what I don't like about this is that selector switch typically gets hidden under the dash. So you don't have access to changing those voltages at all if your lifestyle changes. While with a lot of other cameras on the market, you can log in digitally and change it via the Wi-Fi app. Parking recording duration. So if you have it 
parking mode turned on, it means the camera will keep recording until the hardwire kit cuts the power supply. If you set it for one hour, it means the camera will shut down after it gets into parking mode for one hour. Keep in mind, the low battery protection trumps everything. So if it drops below that set voltage before the one hour, it will actually shut off. So Viofo has the options of 30 minutes, one hour, two, three, four, six, eight, 12, 24, and 48 hours. You can also leave this setting off and the unit will shut off as soon as the low battery protection hits. Loop recording and video length recording. Viofo has flexible options of one, two, three, five, or 10 minute file recordings. Recording will begin automatically after powering on with a micro SD card in the device. Each recorded file is up to one minute long, with old footage being replaced when the micro SD card is full. Now, I actually really like this option. Uh, I'm used to majority of the brands I deal with all have one minute video file recording, which is nice because if you only have an accident, you really only want like a one minute or a 20 second video file. However, what are really nice is sometimes I do like a video blog or I'm trying to do a footage that's that may be three or four minutes long in length. And the fact that I have five or 10 minute video file options, it makes it really easy for the videos that I'm editing and making. And I've had customers over the years ask me for a device that had longer video file recording because when they're, they want to actually take a video and show their travels. So if you are somebody who's looking to have that and have like a 10 minute drive of driving through the country, guess what? This is the dash camera for you. It will actually do that. File list organization. Viofo has three options. All files, locked files, and parking files. Okay, so if we actually break it all down and go through the different files, all files is gonna show you all the files on the dash camera. The locked files is gonna show you files where there were impacts or you've hit the emergency manual recording button and parking files is gonna show you incidents that happened while parked, okay? So for me, where I do like this, I do like that the, when the files are locked, they're locked and they won't be overwritten no matter what you basically do on that dash camera. You have to basically go in and manually delete them yourself. So I do like that feature. Uh, what I don't like is the file organization. I find it's a little bit harder to kind of go through, especially when you have a three channel dash camera, like I've been using in the cam in the vehicle right now. And you have to see uh, all three. And what's nice is when you look at like uh, some of the other competitors, it's a lot easier to see the difference between front and rear. Uh, while the Viofo, I don't like their like I said, I don't like their file list organization system, but that's just my personal opinion. There's plenty of other people out there that do like it. But as you can see from the video, this will actually show you and give you a good idea of how those files are organized. Emergency recording. So if you actually look at this button right here, the yellow button, which we said earlier, and I hit the button, So basically, a couple different things. When the G sensor is activated and a collision occurs, current footage will be locked automatically to avoid being overwritten by loop recording. What I, the button I just hit there was the manual emergency recording button. So pressing that button during footage recording will lock the current footage to avoid being overwritten by loop recording. Any way you look at it, uh, that's the way it works. Now, what is kind of nice is when you have it on like five minute or 10 minute videos, it locks that whole five minute video. So the bad thing about that is if you have a small SD card in there, your small SD card is going to be the point where it's going to like overwrite and there's not going to be a lot of record time. Okay. So that's kind of a negative 
to having it on those long video file records, recording times. However, with, with the emergency recording feature, I do like that it's not going to record over it at all, and you don't have to worry about that potentially happening. Languages. There's actually 13 different languages if you need to change the voice notification system at all for the dash camera. Here are some of the languages that are available to you. LCD screen. This dash camera does not come with an LCD screen at all. I'm actually personally hoping they make an A229 with the Starvis 2 sensor in because I do like that little screen being able to see things. I think it looks really nice and they've done a really good job of having it compact. However, if your hopes are to buy this unit looking for an LCD screen, this unit does not offer those options at all. Voice recording. The OFO unit has the capability of voice recording, and you can also turn it on or off right here by pushing the microphone button. So if you don't want it to record your voice at all, just simply hit the button and you can turn it right off. Or if you actually want to have even better voice recording, you can always look at upgrading to the lavalier microphone kit from Viofo. Dash cam cable sizes. What I really love about the A139 Pro is it actually uses a very small cable run from the front to the rear if you are doing a two channel setup. So the main thing about this is the current cable on like the A129 Pro, it's about five millimeters in thickness. And then when you look at the A139 Pro, it's actually using a 2.8 millimeter, so about half the size in thickness. It makes it very easy to run from the front to the back, especially for people who may be trying to do it themselves. The cabling is very small. And I, I really like that because there are a few vehicles out there, especially some of those German vehicles where it can be really hard to get that wiring in and tucked in and hidden underneath in some places. Pros and cons of using the Viofo A139 Pro. First things first, high dynamic range. I love this new technology. When executed properly on a dash camera, it works really well. Number two, it'll support up to a 256 gigabyte micro SD card. Number three, night vision. It actually works really well at night while driving. Number four, it uses the new Sony Starvis 2 image sensor, which is really exciting because uh, watching how great the video is compared to a lot of the other dash cams I've used over the years, uh, it's working really well. Number five it is so far the best dash cam I have tested for picking up license plate recognition. And last but not least, it uses a very small camera cable from the front to the rear, which makes it really easy for installation and getting into all the little small nooks and crannies when running the wire from front to back. Some of the other dash cameras use a very thick cable and it can be very challenging. Some of the cons, it's using a 1080p rear camera. So some of the other, uh, well actually one particular 4K brand has a 2K rear camera. So this one is only using a 1080p rear, ca rear camera. Not that that's so bad, but it is limited to a 1080p. Uh, the file organization, it's good. I just feel like it could be just a little bit more dialed in, a little bit easier. Uh, some of the other brands will have like like a picture of a car and will show you like uh, front and rear and interior and kind of give you an idea of which video uh, you're actually uh, having access to a little bit easier than trying to like you know, look at the little squares and figure out which one is this front, rear, or interior. Um, it also doesn't have digital low battery protection. Some of the other brands have it where you can just 
change the low battery protection voltage through the app. I do feel that I don't like that it's built into the cable. It would be nicer if it was uh, built into the unit or the Wi-Fi app so you can actually just select it through the Wi-Fi app. And last but not least, really this isn't a big deal. This is more of a personal preference. Uh, it has no LCD screen. So if you are looking for a unit that has an LCD screen, this is not the unit for you. And like I said earlier in the video, I'm hoping that uh, maybe they come up with an A229 with the Starvis 2, just because I do like the look and feel of the uh, A229 uh, series. Okay, here we go. The Viofo A139 Pro versus the Thinkware U1000 and the Viofo A129 Pro 4K. All three of them going through the tunnel test, all three of them mounted on the windshield. So today we're actually testing the Viofo A139 Pro in the rain, because that's what we get here in Vancouver. We don't get real snow too often. But the other big test of high dynamic range and the contrast levels is going through the tunnels. And so we're actually going to be going through the, uh, the tunnel here, the Cassier Tunnel, and actually testing to see how it changes from different various lighting conditions. I do prefer to test, do this test when there's when it's bright light out. Fortunately, this time of year we don't get a whole lot of bright light. We don't get a whole lot of sunshine. So we're, we're gonna, you guys are gonna see how this test came out, 
and because I obviously can't see it right now because I'm just literally talking to the microphone and recording this. So I hope it comes out amazing. So, this concludes our video of the Viofo A139 Pro full review. If you do have questions or comments, definitely leave it down below. We are here to help. We may have missed something. Hard to say. Uh, there's so much stuff to cover. We try and cover as much as we can. Also, um, you know, this is just a very exciting product. So, oh, there's going to be brand new other dash cameras probably coming out with the same tech over the next little while. So it's going to be interesting to see how this compares and stands up against other dash cameras that are going to be coming on the market using this same technology. And I can tell you right now, if we get our hands on any of these new dash cameras, we will do a head-to-head -head test uncompromised of how this is going to do against those other dash cameras. So, Anyways, don't forget to like and sub subscribe. Thanks a lot.